Good day. Welcome to Flight Dreams. We're flying the Twin Otter by Aerosoft today. Uh, absolutely love this aircraft and it's great to fly several configurations and you can see today we have got the skis on. So we're obviously where there's a lot of snow and uh, we'll be flying probably to a base where we're going to need those skis where the wheels won't work. So let's see where we are flying today. North America, obviously. There's Toronto down here. This is where we're flying. This is Hudson Bay. This little tail off of Hudson Bay is James Bay. And we're going to be flying. Let me just zoom in here from Moussigny up to, uh, I hope I pronounce this right, Wimimji. It's a Cree Nation, First Nations settlement. So we're taking off over the water, over James Bay, and landing there. And let me just put some layers on here. Wind barbs. It's showing at the surface. I just want to see where we're going here. Wind will be at our back, which is great. Always nice to have a tailwind. We'll be landing to the west. The wind will be off our left when we get there. So that's, that's good. We're okay with that. We will need this NDB. We'll put that in uh, 385 for the Yankee November Charlie NDB. Now it's interesting because that NDB is right off the runway. It's a little offset. But there's a, a small town of Wenminji is here. So it's all forest up here. Lots of lakes. They'll be snow covered. And the runway will be snow covered, so it might be a, uh, a little hard to find it. It depends on how we go in. Probably use the um, RNAV approach. You know, I sense just says, have a look here. Don't know which, well, since it's coming from it being the wind, let's pull it up here, the charts. Approach, I think we're going to be taking 28. So we'll probably use this chart to come in and uh, satin axis, uh, I guess, X, axa, and then into the runway. And the town is down here, so we're going to use the town too as a, as a visual guide. So Let's hop in, and uh, we'll see, we'll get this Twin Otter started, we'll get going. Here we are on the flight deck, so let's start the checklist. Parking brake set, control locks off, fire handles in, emergency fuel switches off, uh, normal rather, emergency pumps both off. Let me just, uh, there we go, emergency pumps both off. Uh, where are we here? Fuel selector, normal. Fuel boost pumps off. Ram air closed. Vent is off. Up here, de-icing switches. Off. Bleed air off. Pedo heat off. Generator switches. I should be showing you where these are. Off. Windshield heat is off. Wipers are off. There's the wiper switch here. Wiper switch. Landing lights. Here, right there. Off. Ignition switch normal. Normal and guarded. Flap handle, up, right here, We're up, fuel levers off, see them here, if we come over to this side, they are off, propeller feathered, this handles here all the way back, and idle for the power, for the throttle. Okay, DC master on, battery on. 
the vaults. Let's go into life here. Looks like we've got some icing happening, so we're going to get some heat on here. It's cold in here. Above 18, internal lights as required. So we arm that. Let's put them on. Dim reading lights can be on. Uh, and turn that to manual or to auto. Let's go back to here. Let's get that heat going there. We're going to get this fired up. Light six. Sorry. Six. Now, these lights, oh, in the last update, the no smoking feet seatbelt sign uh, will not stay down, so we'll just assume that they are fine. Position light on. Emergency lights are on. Armed. Fuel quantity. Here we are here. Fuel quantity is checked. Fire detection. Missed that one. Okay. The arm goes off. Fuel quantity indicator. Are they going down? Yes, they are. And rising again. We're fine. ELT. Test. And then arm. Fuel boost. Check. The Boost pump check. Fuel boost pump forward. On these lights go off there. On the left side, the lights go off here. Come back on. That's great. Cross feed to the right. Cross feed goes out, turn that off. On uh, cross feed. Done. Fuel selector aft. Four three four and aft. Okay. Now, interesting today, we are actually on a cargo run. No seats in the back. Just this big cargo we're going to drop off at the destination. It's all strapped in. So, our parking brake is set. Overhead lights are on. Overhead panels, these will not stay on. Nothing we can do there. Overhead and the flight data recorder. Test on. So now we're going to start the six inch collision lights on. Okay. Fuel levers off. Powers feathered, power levers flight idle, and fuel bumps both on. Let's turn them on here. Bring that yoke back. On and on. Starting the right engine. Start the right. Oil pressure is rising. Right fuel. Serves it to the T5 is up above 42 there. Starter switch back to the center left. Pressure going up. When you hit here, 14. Steady, that's fine. Left fuel lever on. T5 
is rising. And there we go, that's coming on, which is great. Let's put the generators on. And while we're here, let's set those bleed air on. So we start getting some heat in here. Let's see what the temperature is. Uh, about a minus 11 centigrade, 10 Fahrenheit. Cold day here. Okay. I'm going to get the flight plan loaded up. Flight plan. So we are going from Moussini, which is C, Y, M, O. There we go, there's an E. Yes, I want to add it. And we're going to see Y and C. There we are. We're Minji. Intro. Yes, at that, we're going to be flying at about 5,000 feet. That's where we're starting. Put this back to the flight plan. That's where we're starting anyway. 5,000 feet. Let's change this to be the GPS. And over here, our heading to get to Momenji is 43. So let's turn this. Set this already to 43, out there. Great. Now I do want to get the ATIS, the weather. 124.8. So, oh, 124. There we go, and flip that up. It should come on. So we'll just get rid of that for the moment. So, strong winds today, 232 at 27. I'm sure we'll be taxing out 24. I'm going to U-turn here and we'll head out to the southwest. Winds, 9 statute miles. Visibility, the winds are, or sorry, the clouds broken at 2,000. Ceiling at 5,500 here. That's good. The barometer, 29.75, and that's what we're set on. So that's, that's good. Okay, volt. Continue with the check volt and amps. Look fine. Generators, do they need to be reset? No. Bus tie in normal. Bleed air is on. Warning lights. And uh, we have one warning light over here. And that's because we are still, I believe. Yeah, there we go. There we go. You said the props are fine. Vent fan as required, don't need it. Radio switch to stamp transponder. Stand by. Flaps 10. And you'll know, see here. Got 10 now. 
Okay, passenger signs are on, flight controls free and clear, yes. Full movement, interests are fine, or they should be. Let's get some de-icing going here. It is cold, but I don't know what we're going to face, so I'm going to put them on. It could be dry enough that we don't need it, but we're going to put those on anyway. Okay, let's bring the tower up. <clears throat> it's our choice. Here we go. Announce taxi. And there we go. What I'm going to do is have our co-pilot do all the communications from now on. And we're ready to go. So let's put that taxi light on. Take this off for the moment. Break off. And off we go. And I do have a switch down here, I'll show you. Right here. Put the skis up or down. Right now they are up. So we're touching mostly pavement. We're fine. But when we do get uh, on our final, or maybe a little bit before, into Wimidji, we will have to put those skis down and not land on the wheels. The wheels come down just a little bit, but not as much as they do. Oh. And the wheels are up. We're going to go Bravo today. Any planes? No, nope, we are entering a runway. So, landing lights on. Strobes on. I'll leave the taxi lights on so we have full visibility. Let's see where we are down here with that. That's okay. Set the trim in a few minutes. Let's take one last look. Okay, we can start some of our other checks. Auto feather. Armed props full forward. Let's have a look here. No one coming. We're not going to stop. We're just going to turn left here. Backtrack on 24. Say windsock. Let's see if we can 
me zoom in here. Yeah, the winds were 232 at 27, so just a little bit off to the left as you're facing down 24. It's perfect. The waiver blades are iced up like crazy. Make sure the pedal heat is on. Test. Okay, something goes wrong. Good, we're warm enough in here now. Let's put the trim over to 10%. One thing I didn't do, usually put that on where I push back from the terminal when we start. So the hours I'm pilot in command. We should have, in this area here, a spot where we can actually put our nose in to turn around. But if we don't, we'll be okay. The Twin Otter has a great turning radius. But there we go. We got that yellow taxi line to help bring us around, so we'll use it. Just want to check the weather one more time. A final two nine or six nine. The altimeter sets the altitude above ground, so kind of important we know that to be bang on. I actually played with the settings earlier. Um, the view, I don't like the view I've got, but we'll deal with it. I'll fix it uh, later. So we're going to bring the torque up to 30. It's the torque here. As long as all the instruments are stable, they look at release the brake. And we're going to go up to about 50 on the torque just below. We don't want to redline it. Airspeed's alive. VR is about 90 where I do it. There we go. Rotate and we're off. Try to keep rate of climb at about a hundred. Okay, we can turn the auto fetter off, put the yaw damper on.
sun up there. And pull the prop back to feather. Hear the difference. And our throttle went up, so we got to pull our throttle back a bit. There we go. Let's see here. We're to the right of the line. Here's the runway where we took off from. So we're to the right of the line. Gotta come back a little bit to the left. And those and that broken arrow in here lines up. We write on this magenta line. And I think I'm going to turn on the autopilot now. Autopilot. I want to climb. I like to start it at a thousand, and depending, and I'll put it on nav, so it flies the magenta line. I like to start at a thousand. Then <clears throat> uh, it balance it off. Then uh, with the higher or lower rate of climb. To keep it around a hundred, I have to keep on adjusting. That beep just tells me I'm a thousand feet away from my desired height or altitude, which is five thousand. Well, we can turn the uh, taxi light off. We are below five, ten thousand feet today. Chose to be a little lower. Uh, it's a short flight. It's only 122 miles, nautical miles. So I didn't think we needed to climb that high. So we've got a large fuel load on today. And we've got a uh, heavy cargo in the back. So we're going to, at this weight, cruise is just about 50 on the torque. The economy cruise is 40, but we've got tons of fuel. And I've got to have fuel to get back. So we have tons of fuel to get back also. So fine there. Let's pull up the chart. Get rid of the airport chart. Switch the low altitude charts here. Zoom out. So we are looking uh, looking good. Making that turn to get onto this magenta line. And we'll be able to see. Same thing here is James Bay. You see, here's the land, and this is all ice. So I'm not frozen in the middle of the bay yet. And at this time of year, if it hasn't frozen already, it probably won't. Talk about wilderness. Now, I want to set the NDB385. You can see these lights going on and off. Just the trim is in motion, whether it's going up or down. And that relates to the nose trim. The plane's automatically doing that for me. So I want to get... Um, Tristan, we're going to have to... Go to the right here so we can see it. 
that number to 385, so switch it back here. Three, put that in, eight, pull it out, and five. And put it to the active side. And ADF, I just put that on. So we'll get a warning signal that uh, this has come to life. So we are going to fly. I'm going to make the heading here, the heading that we're actually going. Um, even though we're going to fly the RNAV approach in, I have, I've set the NDB so that it will be a backup. Should the RNAV go out, we have a problem. I've misjudged whatever. Um, the NDB will point towards the airport. I said I usually at above ten thousand you turn the lights off, but we're below, so I'm leaving them on. Um, we don't have to worry about these because we'll a they're off. Hopefully the next update that'll be fixed again. Come back here and just hunker in. So we'll be there in about 33 minutes. Just at this speed, 33 and a half minutes. And let's just have a look to see. The wind is 40 knots almost from behind us. I'm going at a good clip. Very nice. We won't be calculating our top of descent today. We're actually going to use this, the VNAB feature here. Where the flight management computer will actually calculate our, uh, when we have to descend. We'll descend at 1,000 feet per minute. But what I need to tell it is will be a thousand. We have to descend here to seventeen hundred feet by AXA. Oh, sorry, by Saturn. So that's what we will put in. But I'll put it in after. I put this in forty-five in fifteen minutes. It'll be sixteen hundred. Uh, we'll see where the winds have gone. Actually, we don't even need to do that. I'm being a little bit over cautious because we bring up the chart again, see where the winds are. So uh, 28 is going to be a good runway. So why don't we put that in now? Let's bring that up. So let's zoom in. So procedure. Select approach. RNAV 10. No, we want RNAV 28. There's only one of them here. So I'm just get more. Enter that. And there we are. Satin. Satin. And that is our ADF. And you see the line has gone from parallel to the horizon, pointing at the uh, NDB at the airport. So let's turn that off, so we don't need that on anymore. We can. So let's enter this. You see this has changed. We're not going to Charlie Yank and then we're Charlie first, we're going to set him. And what we can do, the Morse code there, to, 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 long, dash, dot, 
dash dot dash dot. So that matches up. We know we've got the correct NDB. Uh, there's nothing else around here. Other NDB. There's this one. But that's not the one we have tuned in. It's, it would be a different um, Morse code identifier there. So we know we've got the right one. So I've turned that off. Let's do our VNAV. So we want to be 1,700 feet. And because we have five miles being uh, sat in an AXA, I'm going to say, let's move this, we want to be target position is zero miles before Satin. Enter. So it tells me we got 27 minutes to go. Before we actually have to start our descent. So I'm get rid of that for the moment. And just sit back and enjoy. Let's keep the heading. Bug, always try to do that, it's good practice, in case the autopilot goes out, or sorry, the uh, GPS mode goes off, and you have to fly by heading, you're going in the direction you want. If we had the bug over here, we'd make a sharp left, and that's not what we want. It's the temperature, 5,000 feet here, about minus 18 centigrade. Zero Fahrenheit. You can see, I hope, the plane moving back and forth a bit. And that's from the winds, from pushing us from the back. Let's have a look to see what they are. Oops, didn't mean to do that one. There we are. Always wise to go out here to do this. So it's a 35 almost right behind us now. This is uh, autopilot also. So if I clicked off nav here, it would click off the nav there and it would stop following the flight management computer. Click on heading, it would follow this heading. So I could set it here or there. I can set the altitude here or there. I like to use this, this panel. And you can set the uh, feet you want to, the rate you want to descend at or ascend at, as you saw earlier, just after we took off from Moussigny. Oh, looks like a little island here. You can see we're heading up to here. Let's just see if that's on the map. Sometimes it's too. There it is, right here. This is a little bit of the tip of the southern part of the island that we're seeing. What does interesting? So we'll come out a bit. So this is an island here. This island is this island. Let me see, we're going to go into some clouds, but we'll keep it at 5,000 feet today. Give you a better look at the water from this perspective into the clouds. I don't think we're going to be doing any cloud surfing which is the term that's used when we're just over the top of the clouds, just skimming over the top of the clouds, and it's called cloud surfing. I 
on the other hand maybe we'll take it up see if we can get there so let's go up to seven altitude or six rather no I gotta go up to seven actually because this has to clear first eastbound between uh, 0 and 180 on the compass you fly when you at uh, odd feet so 7000 flying westbound you would fly at an even number and if you were flying VFR you would add 500 to that number so if we were going to fly VFR we'd be at 7500 Looks like I have to go up a little bit more, too. Just those clouds in front of us. Let's see if we can get up to 9. Now, what you'll see happening FNAF. This won't change as rapidly as it would have. Now, it's moving a little bit differently because it's not smoothly down because of the tailwind we're having. But because we're going higher, we will have to descend sooner. So we'll keep an eye on that. Will this do it? We're at 6,500 feet. Put the here, move the throttles forward a little bit. Oh, a little bit too much over the red line. We'll go there. It's a beautiful day up here. Not a part of Canada I fly in a lot. I've been to Moosonee, uh flying from Timmins up to Moosonee and then back in flight sim, not in real life. But I've not crossed James Bay over uh, to the Quebec side of James Bay right now. We're, we left from the Ontario side, the province of Ontario going to the province of Quebec. So this is new for me. This is interesting. I'm not sure we can cloud surf there or not. This is that island. We're seeing it right here. The GPS. But we're, only, we're a thousand feet. Let's see what we get. When we get to 9,000 feet, we can just surf our way along, get some good views for you. Again, that beep is we're 1,000 feet within our target altitude, which is 9,000. Clouds look like they've got just a little bit of snow in them, that gray tinge. I didn't raise the flaps, which is silly, so I just did that now. That would have caused a lot of drag on our plane. Increased fuel, not a good thing. Management would not be happy with me about that. I missed that on the checklist. Normally don't. It's very tough to tell whether we're going to go above that or not. I don't think we are, so let's uh, see if we can see what everything is. 25 minutes left in the flight. VNAB, 18 minutes. Do we have to start descending? Let's see if we go up to 11. Again, we'll put it at a 1,000 a feet per minute.
You can see I've got the, remember, I turned on the windshield heat. It's not as iced as it was on this side, but the wiper on my side is totally clear now, which is great. In case we need it. We don't always need the wiper in snow, in rain, uh, and we don't use it when we're only when we're landing, taking off, and we're at ten thousand feet. Only when we're landing and taking off. Um, but the snow, depending if it's uh, dry snow, fluffy snow, it doesn't even hit the windshield. The air. The cushion of air that comes off the windshield uh, is sufficient to cause that light fluffy snow. Uh, it will hit the cushion of air and just head off. Won't even touch the windshield. And of course, as you land, slow down to taxi, it will then start getting to the windshield at some point. I don't even think 11,000 is going to do it. see on the nav how many minutes we have I have 12 minutes Oh, well, we're going to go through them. Because we have 12 minutes. If we go higher, that time will shorten. So right, let's go through them and see what we've got today. And you saw nothing popped out of that little cloud. The thing I'm going to do while we're waiting here, just as another check you see the ndb is offset 275 is the heading to go in so i'm going to set that on the compass and it will be have to go up here it won't be perfect Just set two seventy five here. It won't be perfect uh, because it, NDB is offset; it's not right in our path. But should something happen to the autopilot, it give me a very good indication of where the airport is. And you can see. Let's just see what's happening here. Vertical nav, 10 minutes, 9 minutes. I'm going to start to set it. 
Double check, 1700 feet at set, right on it. Perfect. It won't change what, we'll, what we will be doing. Let me just check here. I'll put this up a little bit more. We can go normal cruise speed. <clears throat> what we will be doing, let me just check the fuel here. We're okay. That was about 1,100 pounds more. So we're great there. So 2,000 actually. 1,000 here. 1,100 here. So 2,100 pounds. Um, what we will be doing when it comes time is resetting this to be this being the altitude to 1,700. Once this goes to zero, then we'll descend based at a uh, thousand feet per minute and we'll try to maintain this airspeed here. Which means playing with the throttles a bit. All the flight instruments look good. They're in the green. That is a big cloud. Now I don't think we're going to get the weather here. But let's try. Should be just traffic though. So we're not going to get it. But that's okay. We are. We use the discovery vector chart. Which is that one that we were looking at to get the surface winds in the direction. So it looks like the surface winds are 5, 10, 15 knots. We're going to be heading 280, which is about this direction. So the wind will be off from our left. Let's see. That's why these charts are so invaluable to have. This is obviously from Navigraph, paid subscription. The sky vector charts are free. On the web, this is a paid subscription. It has all the uh, it has the world map which we're looking at now. Low level en route, high level en route, and it has uh, for the airports that have them has all the charts, which is what we're using down here. And the coverage is worldwide. Now, this is interesting. Mm -hmm ceiling has climbed to see where we are looking here this island right here this is this island right here and this will be the ice pack and land will be over here but in the meantime let's Make sure how many minutes we are from sending 440. We will be staying overnight in Bemidji. Reason being one of the parts that we have, um, they have a generator. That's what we have in the box in our cargo hold. Uh, that's not working too well, but it is working. So they got to keep that going. 
and then unhook that generator, hook up our new generator that we're bringing to them, and then load that back in the box and give it to us. And it's not a, not a quick fix. So um, by the time they get all that done, it will be late instead of heading back. Uh, it'll be very late, actually. Instead of heading back, we'll just head back in the morning. You can see even more ice is coming off. Just nice off the wipers, that is. I was going to leave the icing systems on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just in case. Side island here that we were looking at on the map. Right there. Yeah, pull in here. 237 until we start to descend. I will look at maps over and over, charts over and over again, just to make sure I've got everything right in my mind, what we're doing. So let's have a look here. Find a satin at 1700 feet. I'm coming in something like this, give or take. Actually, like this, I would think. We'll fly at 1,700 feet for five miles. And we'll turn left. And 0.7 miles before Boxug. Boxug. We will start to descend at 500 feet per minute. And that will get us right to the end of the runway. So where are we here? A minute 11. And as we make our turns, this will arrow will turn uh, to let us know we're on course. And we will get an indicator in here to know that we are above or below the glide slope and this is not an ILS so it will not capture it we'll have to uh, capture it and depending on what the weather is like I may hand fly it in or I may let the autopilot still fly it in based on my input of 500 feet per minute so 23 seconds you'll see this will be changed to descend to target there we go so we want to go down to 1,700 feet. Arm that altitude. And we want to go down it. I say go down. I should really be saying descending. Better term, better phrasing. So descending, passenger size we don't have on. Bleed air is on. Anti-ice deflector is on. Landing lights on. Fuel quantity checked. Well, those are our descent checklist. Take another picture of this. And I mentioned earlier that settlement is just the east northeast of the airport so we'll be looking for that as a visual guide also when we get closer
you can see here profile is a thousand feet to make it to satin here we actually have to descend at 1016 so we're good enough I can only get it to the hundreds of feet anyway to descend so quite happy with where we are and we have cushion on the other side we have five miles from satin to axa to make sure we get down to the 1700 feet lots of cushion so I'm going to pull the throttle back here, redlining a bit. We don't want to do that. We're getting near the red line. I'm going to pull it back to about 45 torque. Let's see what that does to the speed. How long have we been flying here? 40 minutes. 40 minutes is since I turned on the clock. Let me see here. We're coming in. If I come in a little bit more. Oh, that's going out. Come in a little bit more. You can see the turn we're going to make. And now to get to Satin we have to be 999 feet. So bang on, doing well. Limit of the ice pack, lots of islands around here, lots of snow. You can see why I um, mentioned all the uh, forest that's around here. The runway is going to look something like this, just a patch of snow. It will be rectangular the patch, but it could be a little bit tough to see. But that all just adds to the challenge. You can see here our NDB now is pointing off at about 10.30 to where the airport is, the NDB at the airport. Just use all of these little tips and tricks to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. So we're climbing up a little bit. I'm going to pull back to 45 here, torque. And just double check here. We got six miles between Axis here and Buxug here. As I mentioned we're going to be descending 0 0.7 nautical miles before Buxug. But we have time in here to start slowing the plane down, doing some of the other checks that we we have to do. Still creeping up. So I'm going to go down to 40. We'll be at sound in 2 minutes and 54 seconds. Trees are getting a little more definition. We are at uh, 5,200, 5,100 feet. Before it just seemed to be a patch of some green, as well as the snow. These are all rivers, by the way. There's no roads up here. Uh, there was one road <clears throat> out of, let's see if I can get it here. There's one road, can I even get it? There it is there. Um, out of Wimengi. I'm sure this is how you spell it uh, in the Cree Nation. But this is the one road 
going all the way out here to the main north-south road. And so all these other lines were, were far away from this. You can see, you wouldn't see it. All these other lines are rivers. So how are we doing here? 40. Still doing well. We'll be at satin at 142. So you see here we make a bit of a dog leg. I guess we're in Canada, so we should say hockey stick. And then a left turn, about a 45 degree, then a 90 degree left. Now in real life, I'd be able to call in and get the barometer, the altimeter reading. But we can't get charts there. And we'll just see here if we have airport list. We're going to see select runway 28. No, so I don't know what the um, saying we're within a thousand that we're making our turn. I don't know what the barometer is, but in flight sim we can have this little neat thing. We just press B on the keyboard, and it changes it to what we are right now. It's twenty nine fifty five. That may be one of the most crucial things that you have to do is making sure you get that because that changes your altitude. And of course, you always have to have the right altitude. Right now, I can see where we are, but if you were in full cloud, you would have no reference to the ground. You would think you were at the altitude that's showing up here and because you'd have the altimeter wrong the altitude is wrong so here's the indicators that i had mentioned earlier what i'm going to do is set it was 275 So, a uh, heading into the runway was 275. So, I'm going to set this now. And it's only an indication here. You can see we're flying right to here, AXA. And this broken line is all in line. Doesn't matter where I move it on the dial, it's more if, if this is broken or not. But I like to set it on the heading runway heading let's come here and here 275 and you see we've actually showed up um, i like to set it for the runway heading so that it's actually facing in the correct direction like that i mean in front of us so making our turn do another check passenger sign on lead air on de ice on lemon lights on altimeter set Yaw damper off. Propellers full forward. You can hear the change. And we will be. I'm going to pull the throttle back. I want to get to about 120. You can see Bucks Hog, so we're about 0.7 there. We've got to start descending. and 50 feet so i'm going to put in uh, i'll change it now uh, 50 but down to about 300 feet i will probably turn this off the autopilot off well in advance however pull the airspeed back check the chart again which is since you four Flaps 10.
that's the noise you heard was the hydraulics we are landing in the snow so let's put our skis down throttle back a bit more. Now if I didn't have this RNAV approach, which the computer is flying at the moment, I would have flown right over the town, over the airport rather. Got some uh, visuals, which is the town, a couple of other things, uh, flowing a, a, a pattern manually to go out from the runway and then turn around and come back into the runway with some visual Uh, markers don't have to do that though so where are we here 2.3 miles let's just go in here so 2.2 nautical miles would be there in 1.2 but at 0.7 when this hits 0.7 and i'll just zoom in here we have to start our descent at 500 feet per minute this should actually change also start to descend Cloud level is fairly low, just at the bottom. And start pulling back a little bit more on the throttle to slow us down some more. Nine point eight point seven. So let's start descending five hundred feet per minute, and we're only four miles out. So flaps twenty, flaps thirty. You see here they're actually set to thirty, but the on the indication here also so on final flap set yaw damper off we should have enough runway here stall i'm going to put a little bit more power in there how long is the runway 3500 feet we've got plenty of runway don't think you're going to need reverse thrust going in here. A little bit high. A little bit to the right. Here you see. This is probably it right here. It's probably the town. But we'll know when we get closer. I think this is the runway. I take it off autopilot. I'm going to fly it, hand fly it here. That sound was the autopilot disconnecting. I keep it here at about 1,100 feet, <clears throat> Tom. A little more sure. Yes, this is the town. You can see the buildings here. And this is our runway. Those clones look very ominous now. Up in here. So... Pull it back, it being the props of the throttle, sorry, throttle back. That's the town there. So this is our airport here. Not too bad. Let's see what the, uh, the wind is 14 from our, about 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, and we were saying 15 on the chart. So there's the town. And we're coming in. Pull the speed back a bit. And 
And that's the call for 500 above ground level, which in this case is just about 500 above sea level also. Not quite. These trees are a little bit daunting. Just go over those. We've got lots of runway. Put it down. And we have reverse thrust on the Twin Otter should I need it. Don't think I will, though. Just over the trees. Turbulence. Turbulence there. Pull the prop back a bit. Fly it in. Prop back. Touchdown. We should see all the snow kicking out. Sorry, it gets a little loud there. All the snow kicking out. So I will hit the... Uh, Reverse thrust here, so brakes don't work that great on snow. There we go, reverse thrust off. And go forward here. Didn't mean to bring the plane to a full halt. Okay. Go through our checks here. Flaps up. Taxing on snow is a little bit different. Yeah, that sky looks ominous. I'm glad we're staying until tomorrow before we head back. And I said it's just a little bit different. I don't taxi on snow very much, so it's a different experience where you actually set those props. You have to set them higher. Higher than on an asphalt concrete runway, but not so high that you get moving too fast. And not so low that you stop. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. Head over here to what passes as a terminal here. Here. Strobes off. We won't need the taxi light today. My bleed air will still be on. Pedo off. De ice. I gotta slow down here. And I will use. Okay, we're going to put it right here. Let's get those brakes set. Okay, de-ice. Off. Bleed air, we want it still coming through. It's cold outside. Landing lights, off. Transponder, we can now turn off. We don't need to tell anybody where the ground is. We should have reset that trim. We set it to zero. We're, and we have our parking brake set. If you want it's propeller, we want a feathered. So pull all the propeller back. And then pull it back further. That's feathered. Generators off. Fuel levelers off. No, oh. there we go. Fuel levers off. Fuel boost pumps off. Did I turn those landing lights off? I did. So let's go back to the cabin here and open the door. On both sides. That way the crew has full access and 
Turn up here. DC off. We'll turn the battery off. DC off. How far were we? Not coming up. Right, it's because I did that. Let's set the control locks. And we can hop out. Well, that's interesting sound. <laughs> well, let's hop back in. <laughs> well, that's it. That's a nice little cargo run. Uh, great uh, landing in the snow. Always different. You can see the snow kicking out the back. Uh, really enjoying this Twin Otter. There's uh, regular wheels, the skis, Tundra reels. There's floats and amphibians. So you'll see me flying a lot of this in the weeks and months to come. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me. And as always, may you have uh, clear skies, three green, and the wind at your back. Till next time on the Flight Dreams channel.